we're going to look at how we can get our Psychic service to run on our production server. And for our production server, I followed episode 31. However, I will show some tidbits of how you can get this working on Heroku as well. So to get started, we'll first need to install the Redis server. So on a Ubuntu server, you can do sudo apt install Redis server. You'll need to provide your password, and then it'll install the Redis service. And because we installed Redis this way, it'll automatically start up and restart whenever our server boots up. Our production environment may vary quite differently from what we'll need in our development environment. So we can create a config file under the config folder and just call this sidekick.yaml. Within this file, we can set up with something like this where you can set a couple of different options. For example, like concurrency is 10. However, on a production environment, it'll have a 25 concurrency. You can set your PID files, and then you can also create your different queues. And it's important to let Psychic know which queues to be listening on, otherwise some of your jobs may never process. And you can also pass in your queues as an array, something like this, where this is going to be a weighted option where the critical will be checked twice as often as the default or low. So we can close and save this file. And now we have a YAML file that we can reference when we start up our Psychic process. So in order to have the Psychic process start whenever our computer boots, we need to configure a service file. I'll check to see where my deployment path is, so the root of my application. I can also check which Ruby version, and I can also check which Ruby I'm using. So here it's using a RVM, and it's deployed under the Ruby 233. So once you know where your application is, and what version of Ruby, and where that Ruby path is, we can go ahead and edit our file. So we can edit the file lib, systemd, system, and then sidekick.service. And you will need to run this as sudo because it does require elevated privileges. And I'll paste in the file that we'll be working with here. And the main thing that you need to note is under the service tag, the working directory, you'll want to paste in wherever your production path is for your application. And then under exe start, you'll see that I'm referencing to the bin bash login and then this is going to execute the bundle exec, and then the sidekick environment production, and then we're going to pass in that config file that we set earlier. And it's going to run this and execute this under the deploy user. And because our deploy user is the one that has the RVM installed and the Ruby 2.33, it should have no problem accessing it under this service. We can then call sudo system control, enable, and then the sidekick.service. You'll see that this creates a sim link to the system psychic service and it's sending it to the multi-user target once psychic service and this will just make sure that whenever our server is booted that it'll start this service as well. We can then call sudo service psychic start and once the service is running we can check our psox grep psychic to see if it's running and the problem here is that I don't see it actually running. So we can check our log file. You can run sudo cat, then var log, and then the syslog. Then you'll see here that within our config YAML file, we had a setting to log our 10 PIDs. However, it's unable to find this folder PIDs. So this is simple enough. We can just create mkdir, and then to our temp folder, and then PIDs. We can then call sudo service psychic and then start again. We then run psox again, and now we see that our psychic service is actually running. So if we stop our service, and then we go to our application to queue up a few jobs. So within our application, we can queue up a few jobs. If you remember, this is just a sample application from our previous episode where we create random users. And if we go to forward slash psychic, you'll see that we have six jobs in queued. However, none of them have been processed. Back in our console, we can start the sidekick service again. And then back in our application, we can check to see if the jobs have been processed. And you'll see that the jobs have processed, and a couple of them have failed, and that's just because I'm using SQLite on this example application, and it's not really good at handling concurrent requests like this. However, retrying the jobs, you'll see that they have all now processed, and the ones that have failed have already retried and been processed. So if you are deploying your application to Heroku, you will need to install Redis and also enable a proc file to then start up the workers. So you can call Heroku, 
add-ons, create, Redis to go, and then a nano version. You'll then want to make sure that under your config initializers, sidekick.rb file, that you have the sidekick configured to connect to the Redis server at a environment variable. So you can put some logic in here for your production environment, or you can just create a environment variable, and then we'll just call this the Redis provider. And likewise, for our client side, we'll set this option as well. So with setting it as the Redis provider, we can go back into our console and we can run Heroku and then we can pass the config set and then we can set our Redis provider equal to the Redis to go URL. And this way the Redis server will be provided to our application. Another thing that you'll need to do is to create a proc file and this proc file will be used so it can start up the worker for Sidekick. So within this proc file, you may have something like the web server. And then you also need to create a worker. And this worker is going to be where it's start up the Sidekick using the bundle exec Sidekick, passing in the environment production, and then still referencing to our config YAML file. Once you save those changes, you can then call Heroku PS scale worker equals one. And this will start up one worker on your Heroku instance. So regardless if your server is a CentOS, Ubuntu, a Amazon Linux AMI, or if you're using the Heroku server to launch your application, these steps should really get you most of the way there. Well, that's all for this episode. Thank you for watching. For more videos, check out driftandruby.com.